بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Once again, it's an honor to be amongst you discussing the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. We uh, reach to the first, second verse of Surah Al-Hamd which was Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen As we discussed within the previous episode that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim according to all the Shia scholars and majority of the non-Shia scholars Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first verse which we Alhamdulillah we discussed about it and we brought uh, some action plans which was that inshallah we already have started everything that we do Stating, starting it with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, everything that we do, inshallah, we have uh, practiced, practiced it, inshallah, we have put it into action, that is starting everything with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The second uh, action plan that we gave uh, was also uh, stating and mentioning A'udhu Billah min ash-Shaytan ar-Rajim more often, seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Shaytan that we have mentioned. Alhamdulillah uh, Rabbil Alameen was the third action plan that we gave that everything that happens to us based on the teachings of Ahlul Bayt السلام, that if good happened to us, we will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that benefit, on that blessing, on that ni'mah that He blessed us with. And if something happened to us that upset us, that saddened us, we will inshallah say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Reading through the narrations of Ahlul Bayt under this verse, Alhamdulillah uh, Rabbil uh, Alameen, I have find, uh, I found some narrations which I thought it would be interesting before we move to Ar Rahman Ar Rahim again. Inshallah, we will focus a little bit on this verse still and some of the narrations relating to Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for us to, inshallah, extract more action plans and, inshallah, be. Uh, able to bring uh, Surah Al-Hamd and the verse Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen into our lives and see the benefit. And that's the beauty of it. If you remember, within the previous episode, we discussed the importance of relying on those interpretations that are based on the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam that are based on Qal al-Sadiq alayhi salam and Qal al-Baqir alayhi salam and the rest of the Imams. Because one hadith one verse can have more action plans can come to our lives more if we look at the hadith of Ahlul Bayt rather than just reading it from scientific perspective or philosophical perspective or bringing interpretation other than the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and that was also one of our action plans within the previous episode that inshallah from now on we will only focus on those interpretations that are based on the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. So, An Abi Abdullah alayhi salam al-Sadiq, where Imam says, Shukran ni'mati ijtinabul maharib. As we mentioned, only verbally saying something, saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, or saying Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, verbally, and not believing in it within our heart, with our heart, and not believing it mentally, and not for it to come into our actions, there is no benefit to it. It's just words saying. I mean, it might have some thawab and rewards, but the most thawab, most reward will be shukrun ni'mati ijtinabul maharam. First, when we want to really, truly, genuinely appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be thankful to Him, it's number one, ijtinabul maharam. First, not uh, committing sins. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us infinite amount of blessings that we cannot count as the Holy Quran states that if you want to count the be benefits and the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't be able to count it because there are endless, infinite blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you and I. So, if we want to be very tangible, very specific, very uh, so we can feel the narrations and the teachings of the Quran, we come and we see, for example, our hands, our tongue, 
our eyes, our nose, all of our body parts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed with us. The ears that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. First, we have to be thankful to it by our heart. Believing it, that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, not listening to haram, not listening to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that is, this is forbidden. Shukrun ni'ma. How can we appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us our ears? Not listening to what He has told us that this is forbidden. Gossip, music, and so on and so forth that we have within our uh, books of Islamic law, but our, by our maraja, that these are the things that we should not listen to. Our hand, our tongue, our eyes, should, we should not see things that we are not allowed to see. That is the way that we can appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way that we can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our action shows appreciation and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tamamu shukr, to make it complete and the highest and the best way of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in addition to practically using what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us for the right purpose, for these elements, for these body parts, for these benefits to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to use it for the sake of Allah and Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa If not, it will distance us. The same hand that we can help a needy person, which this hand will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we did something haram with this hand. With the tongue that we can use to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, using it to bad, as using a bad language, or using as a to gossip, or lie, or anything that is haram that we know that we should not commit with our tongue. The same tongue that, that, can, that can get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can distance us away from Allah. And what tamam wa shukri. قَوْلُ الرَّجُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ If we genuinely and truly, in addition to appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our body parts and appreciating it by putting that blessing into the right action, by us saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Keep saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. In whatever that He has given us, for all the blessings, infinite blessings that He has given us, if we want to say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for every blessing as we have said which the Holy Quran said we cannot count Allah's blessing well we can't we should not stop saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen so that becomes an action plan when we are sitting in the car when we are driving to school when we are walking to school when we are work, walking to, the, to work or when we are at home doing some daily chores this tongue of ours should be active by keep saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That is what tamam wa shukri qawlu rajuli Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. For us to constantly reading Alhamdulillah, saying uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This is the benefit. Again, you see why we go to the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, alayhi salam to understand the Holy Quran because they give us tangible, they give us actionable items that we can bring into our lives. So the benefit of uh, enumerating the blessings that we have. Many of the people, unfortunately, they always focus on negativities, on things that they don't have, not on things that they have. They don't think about it. And they always nag and complain that we don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this. Rather than thinking of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them. Where Imam says, Imam, uh, the commander of the faithful, Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam states, Ala wa inna min al-ni'ami sa'atil mal. One of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the wealth. And wealth not necessarily means that we have to be a billionaire to be considered that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed. Some people can provide for their family and their needs. Their needs are met. Well, that is enough for them. This is how much it's sufficient for them. The amount that we have received. وَأَفْضَلُ مِنْ سَعَةِ الْمَالِ صِحَّةُ badan. Some people see that they don't have wealth, but they are healthy. They don't appreciate this. They don't appreciate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them health and they have a healthy body. These people, before nagging, before complaining, before arguing against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have not given us wealth, 
Let them look at their health, that they are healthy people. They don't have any illness. That is, أفضل من سعة المال سعة البدن. Being healthy, it's better, it's more virtuous than سعة المال, more wealth. وأفضل من سعة البدن. What is more benefit, better blessing, higher virtue in blessing? تقوى القلب. The heart that is pious. The heart that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart that pumps and beats for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the sake of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam The heart that always has concern for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That how can I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I get closer to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam Which they will lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which people don't appreciate it. Some people might have health and they might have wealth. But they are not being blessed by the piety of heart, being pious, being God-fearing individual. So Imam says, Imam is gearing our direction. Focus on what you have. If it's wealth, Alhamdulillah, you might not be healthy. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. If you have health but no wealth, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. If you don't have both but you are a pious individual, you are a God-fearing individual, appreciate it, mention it, and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings that we have. One of the most important blessings for us to have the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Wilayat Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa salam. Being under the guardianship, being on the path of the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa salam. I don't think any of us discussing and listening and participating within these talk will exchange the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam, will exchange the guardianship of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam to billions and billions and billions of dollars. A person came to the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa salam and he said, Imam, I am poor. I don't have money. I don't have any wealth. I am uh, suffering. Imam said, you are really, really wealthy. I got, I'm not sure either. Imam Ali or one of the other Imams. Imam said, you are really wealthy. He said, no, I don't have anything. I cannot provide for my family. Imam says, don't you love us? Don't you follow us? He said, of course, Imam. He said, will you change that for 100 dinars? He said, of course not. He said, how about 1,000 dinar? Of course not. And Imam went up and up. Imam said, this wealth that you have, you will not change it with anything. No matter how much prize people give us, we will not let go of Ahlul Bayt salam. We will not let go of their teachings and applying their teachings. So how can we appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this blessing to educate us, to inform us, and to show us the beauty of the words of Ahlul Bayt salam? Loving Imam Amir al Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam and Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam and the rest of the Imam, Imam al-Radha alayhi salam, Imam al-Jawad, Imam al-Kadhim, Imam al-Hadi, all the other Imams loving them and being so sincere, showing sincere love to them, how can we appreciate it? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So when we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you remember within the previous episode we said, we hold on to the rosary or tasbih and we keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering what Allah has blessed us with. Well, one of the most important and the, the first, if we want to categorize it within the first blessing, that are, first five blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us is the love of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa Being introduced to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salam. Being introduced to these gems that can revolutionize our life, that can educate us about the Holy Quran, that can educate us what to do and what not to do, and so on and so forth. So first, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, saying it and keeping in mind that I am thanking Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. I'm appreciating Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala for the ni'mah of wilayah, for the blessing of being under the umbrella of guardianship of Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and the rest of the Imams. And then, not acting and abstaining ourselves from the sins and from the things that Ahl Bayt have told us not to do. If I want to commit a sin, I can be very tangible. As soon as I'm about to commit a sin, I'm in a room or I'm somewhere that nobody that knows me are there present, thinking that if Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Faraj Sharif was sitting here, would I commit this sin? This by itself can become a good tool, good 
equipments that we can have in our hands to not commit sin. If I want to become angry, is it difficult? Of course it's difficult. But the more we practice it, inshallah, it gets uh, part of our habit to keep reminding ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is watching us. And Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, is watching us. So that's first, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, that he gave us this blessing of the wilaya of Ahl Bayt Alayhi Number two, abstaining ourselves from the actions that he ha they have told us not to commit. And then, acting upon their teachings, what they have told us to do, what they want us to do, and their teachings, that requires us to read. And if you remember, we will remind ourselves that the book, Tuhaf al-Uqul, that we introduced it within our previous episode. You can find, uh, find the PDF online and search it and read it and put it next to your sajada. We will keep reminding ourselves. Shaitan make us forget. When we are listening to a good lecture, when we are reading a good book, we come and we determine to do something. But unfortunately, after a day or two or three, we, we lose that momentum. We let go of it. We give up. No, we should continue. The action plan also was from our previous episode to remind myself and ourselves will be to place the Quran and the Kitab Tuhaf al-Uqul next to one another, next to our sajada. Every day, every day that we read a 50 verse of the Holy Quran plus the translation and we're taking one verse to act upon it plus that adding one narration from the life of Ahl Bayt Reading it. This is the way that we show appreciation. Allah sent Ahl al-Bayt to teach us the Quran. We read Quran, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and we move on. No. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen require us to abstain from the sins. Require us to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be satisfied with. And we continue. Amongst things that Ahl al-Bayt have educated us. When we read the hadith, when we read the narrations, and I want, I read Quran. And I want to act upon the verse. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. Okay, I said Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. Is this sufficient? No. When I have hadith of Muhammad and Al Muhammad next to it, Imam said that, remember, Ajtanabul Maharam. Do not commit the sins. More to that, Qala al Rada alayhi salam. Man lam yashkur al mun'ima min al makhlukin, lam yashkur Allah azza wa jal. If I truly want to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to be thankful to my brothers and sisters. And everything good that we do should start at home. I should be thankful to my parents. I should be thankful to my children. I should be thankful to my brothers. I should be thankful to my sister. I should be thankful to my community members for anything that they have done. مَنْ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ الْمُنْعِمَ مِنَ الْمَخْلُقِينَ If you are not thankful, if you don't appreciate the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ He has not been thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this come, these narrations, these teachings come under the, the one verse of Quran, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We haven't still got to the Arab, we haven't got to the Alameen, but we're trying to as much as possible to be practical, to bring the narrations of Ahl Bayt Alayhi so these verses of the Holy Quran come to our life. So if we are more thankful to people, how much our life will be different? How much a husband that is thankful to his wife, th wife that is thankful to, his, to her husband, and so on and so forth as a family, how much this family can have more peace for? Inshallah, we have more to talk about this hadith and being thankful to other people, inshallah. It will be, inshallah, in the next episode. We will conclude by the most important dua, and that will be to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi, ajalallah ta'ala faraj al sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi al-sa'at wa fi kulli sa'ah. Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tamatta'ahu fiha tawila. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين